It used to be that every team or even every team of teams had a single leader. But now that we want self-organizing teams, that we want a, a value focus, that we need autonomy, I don't think the image of a leader, of a single leader, still has a lot of merit. And in fact, in many organizations, it has been replaced by something which is called the team lead triumvirate. So there are three different roles, usually played by three different people, or even more different people than three, depending on the size of the structure. And those, are, those roles are the value outcome lead, the architecture outcome lead, and the team outcome lead. And these, these titles, I've taken them from, from a book called Better Value, Sooner, Safer, Happier. Um, and you're welcome to call them something else. Uh, you, you know, you can, you can call the value outcome lead a product manager, if you like, if you're, um, if you're into, into safe, for example the scale agile framework doesn't really matter but the point is this structure has proven quite useful to have three people with or three roles with a different focus for a big team or team of teams you know this a bunch of people working together here and they take support input um coaching from those three roles up here. So what does the value outcome lead do? Well, they are the person who is paying attention to achieving the desired outcome in terms of value. Are we creating the right product for our customer? Will we delight our customers? This is really um, the thing that the value outcome lead will pay attention to. But of course, uh, they, they will need a lot of support from all of the other people within the team to actually get there. But, you know, this is the person wearing the value outcome hat or the group of persons wearing the value outcome hat. Similarly, you've got an architecture outcome lead. This is not your traditional enterprise architect sitting in his ivory tower um, and, you know, declaring structures that must be followed. This is somebody who supports the team in coming up with an architecture autonomously. And of course, the architecture outcome lead, just because they see a lot more, they've got a lot more conversation going on with different members of this big team, they might be in a better position to offer suggestions or spot issues as they, as they are still sort of brewing. So that's fine. This is the person, you know, who takes care that we are achieving our architecture goals. Just like the value, value outcome lead is the person who takes care that we are achieving our value goals. And then lastly, of course, we've got the team outcome lead. So this is somebody who has an eye on the people. You know, this person here. The value outcome lead, he has an eye, or they have an eye on the value. The architecture outcome lead, they have an eye on the technology. And the team outcome lead, they have an eye on who's actually working here. Do they have the skills they require? Do we have enough staffing? Is everybody happy? Is everybody supported enough? This has been a very helpful structure, which I don't know whether it was pioneered by, um, by Spotify in the famous Spotify model, but it was certainly part of the Spotify model. And I have to say, I like it. It gives this clarity of, okay, this is something that's important, you know, creating value. This is something else that's important, building useful architectures, making sure that the technical structure works and making sure that our people are well supported, that they've got everything they need, uh, that we have an organization that is just good at creating great products.